He's still with you, right? No, my father passed away. When did that happen? Uh, just over five years ago. Ugh. Um, he had ALS, and uh, that was real difficult to witness, to like be a part of it in some ways. Doesn't happen fast. It happened. It takes. It took him a while, but it for a long time. It was time spent wondering what's going on because his body just it didn't make sense to him anymore. It he, he was he had low energy like the the effects aren't um, always tangible they're not visible like you don't see all the side effects it's hard to pinpoint exactly what the problem is essentially ALS is like your body shutting down while you're still in it and that was at the beginning of Silicon Valley. The success of Silicon Valley, right? When he passed? Yeah. It was either the first, yeah, the first year that we went to the Emmys, I didn't make it because I was with him. And, uh, and it, and it was, I don't know, it was, there, there was some, there's something, there's something kind of joyful because that experience meant so much to me now. And all of those people that I got to work with mean so much to me that for my dad to kind of be there at the beginning of it to kind of to watch that rocket take off and appreciate it uh kind of makes it even that much more special to me yeah and in particular i see that uh, kumail came and did your podcast he yeah he was great he was my dad loved his character the most uh on the show because in our because i, I think he had a pretty accurate perception of it, which was that Kumail is the heart of the show. He's, he, you know, and, and that might fluctuate a bit, but he always wore his heart on his sleeve, unlike a lot of the other characters who are kind of being conniving and or, or who are closed off, fully closed off, like the character I played. And your dad um, liked that about him. He yeah. liked that character. Well, it was, it was relatable. He was, he could connect, you can connect with someone who's open like that. Right? Yeah. And he just really liked him and appreciated you know, how, how, where that comedy came from and, you know, where that character came from. Um, I could see you get, like, I could see you getting a little emotional. Can I share two stories with you about my dad? I'd love it. They're just kind of two things that I think embody who he wanted to be all the time, but we're all, um, while he was, so he was so sick when he was his sickest that his legs were as thin as my arms. And, I could see when he came and picked me up at the airport, came to pick me up in a car and he was driving and his legs were so thin and frail that it didn't make sense to me that his body was capable of moving the car, pushing the pedal down. But he acted as if nothing was wrong because it was really the first time I'd seen him since this had really hit. Did he acknowledge it? Did you acknowledge yeah, it? Did you well, say so? I, uh, yeah, I, I said, your dick probably looks massive <laughs> is that what you said yeah. oh yeah and what did he say come on oh we laughed no oh, we laughed did, yeah this is oh, absolutely he taught me the <laughs> sense of humor looks massive. Uh, so his body is so frail and in the coming months it got worse and it became difficult to put his own clothes on and and things like that and there was uh a day when i think he realized that Pretty soon, he, there was no way he was really going to be able to move himself in the way that he's become accustomed. And so he got up before his wife, uh, before my stepmom, and, uh, and got in the car. She didn't know what was going on. It didn't make sense. Like, she always kind of helps him get dressed and stuff at this point. And so, she, so he just kind of snuck out, got in the car, went to Starbucks to get her coffee because she loves coffee in the morning. And, and he knew how much it kind of means to her. And uh, just a simple thing, just a simple gesture of love is, is his motive. And he gets up and he goes to Starbucks and they have drive through windows out there. This is in Florida. And so he goes to the drive through orders. And when he gets to the window, his arms are so weak that these two giant cups of coffee, he can only move one at a time. So he like grabs one, like the guy hands him two cups of coffee and he's like, yeah, yeah, just grab the one here, put that down and then grab the other one. The guy's like, holy shit, like what's going on with this guy? He said like the looks he got from this guy <laughs> were insane. And he was like, are you all right, bud? Should you be driving? And then, so he brings the coffee home, gets out of the car, sets the coffee in and she wakes up to two cups of coffee. 
which he had to painstakingly go through so much effort for. And that was probably a small gesture for him uh, to show, I mean, it was a huge gesture in some ways, but for him to just show the, that he probably didn't pay enough attention. And that's, you know, he expressed that to me later. But that really he was, he was just like, there are so many times I didn't do the smallest things that if I could go back, knowing what I know now, I would have done so much more. Um, so that's the sad, that's a sad, that's a, like, I mean, it's, well, it's, it's hard, it's hard. It's a beautiful story, but you know, it's like, but it's a, yeah, it's like, I could have done all these things. And to that, in that moment, that was the hardest thing he could have done. Mm -hmm. And Believe he, it or not, yeah. that was the hardest thing, and he wanted to do that to sh just sh show her some morsel of love, love, showing as much love as his body was capable in that experience.